Hello, Leo. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Leo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, Leo readings are Tuesdays and Saturdays. And if there's anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Leo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you and Princess of Cups. Nice. Uh, you're a dreamer. Uh, I think that you have, um, and I think we've seen this in the last few Leo readings, you have a very strong connection with your kind of internal landscape, your internal environment, your thoughts, your feelings. I think you're very much in tune with your dreams, with your psychic energies. I feel like, um, I feel like this kind of internal um, exploration, this kind of dream work that you're doing or this astral work or this imagination that you have is really fueling your creativity, fueling your ambition. Um, I feel like you have a lot of ideas, a lot of, a lot of things are coming to you that you want to create, you know, a lot of inspirations. And um, we're going to have to put this into some context and see, you know, what are we doing with that? Where is that taking us? We've got our first card. Let's select our last card. And that's going to be the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. There's one random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. We're just going to set it right here. We'll put Mr. Ed right on top. And now we're not going to look at that card until the very end, but it will tie everything together and it will give us the confirmation that we need. Okay. If at any point during the reading you feel like you might know what that card is, put your prediction down in the comments. Let's make it a group exercise. Okay. So the Princess of Cups is kind of the fish in the percolator. You are one who's very, very keen at um, finding signs and symbols, finding patterns in the environment, finding the the anomalies. You know, you could look at um, you could look at the the world and you could pick out everything that is kind of out of place, right? And this gives you um, something to focus on. And that's like one little thread that you could start pulling to unravel a deeper mystery, you know. So I think you're really, you're really good at following those kinds of omens and synchronicities and stuff. Yeah. The next card we've got is the, oh, the justice card. Um, <clears throat> now there's this idea of how do we kind of, um, how do we take some of these dreams, some of these images, some of these ideas and inspirations... And how do we, um, you know, patent them, <laughs> kind of, um, how do we turn them into something that is um, more formal, more official, and more, um, more like ready to be implemented? You know, how do we organize those ideas? How do we turn them into something that then can be, um, we can then build the prototype for, right? And yeah, we've got an ace of swords. I think there is one particular thing that you are trying to uh, implement that you're trying to perhaps sell or get a patent on or get published or, you know, especially with the with these two cards, with the uh, the Justice card and the Ace of Swords, maybe you are a writer. Maybe you have taken some of this dream work, some of this really deep imagination, and maybe you have kind of focused it, harnessed it, narrowed it down. Right, refined it into you know um, a great story or a piece of art or an idea, a prototype, an invention, um, or maybe a book or a novel, something like that. Right, and so I kind of wonder now if we're we're trying to bring our creation. We have this idea. We're trying to bring it um, to the world, to the publishing house, or to find a I don't know an agent or a manager or something, someone that can help you to manifest it, to bring it to the world, right? And so I see that with this, especially with this, might be even for a lot of you, might be writing, you know? Now we've 
got an ace of cups so this i think is yeah you've discovered that kind of that one thing you've tapped into you've had some sort of spiritual experience a major spiritual event in your life has happened um and this could be kind of a spontaneous kundalini awakening a, a spontaneous uh, activation and i feel like it really really changed your world right and from that point on i think you were very much in touch maybe you became even like a medium or uh, you started channeling or something and it could be that a lot of your ideas now feel like they're channeled right and maybe the writing that you do feels like it's not you moving the pen you know um and i think it's because you've you've tapped into source in a way now that has kind of it's really dusted off your antenna yeah, and now you're just you're able to to tune in quite easily, and this is that that well from from which springs all of your creative ideas, all of your inspirations, all of your imagination, all of your feelings, all of your thoughts, everything, right, comes from this Ace of Cups. So I feel like you, and this could be, I'm seeing something about eleven, eleven years, maybe, maybe it was quite a while ago where you had this experience, um, but now you're really. You're really tapped in now. What do we have next? Well, okay, now we've got some fire here. Now we've got an eight of wands. And this is up above everything. And this is kind of the anxiety that we start to feel when we realize that it's not as simple as just this. It's not as simple as tapping into source and having this wonderful imagination and all of this. This kind of, it's a different perception of the world that you have than, than most people. But you're realizing that this ain't enough. Right? Because now you need to be able to refine that idea into something that is manageable and, and coherent and organized. And then you also need the kind of the, the business side of the world. You need the administrative um, agencies of the world to help you manifest this. And this is causing some anxiety because with the Eight of Wands, there are a million things to do. You can't do a million things at once. So we're getting anxious. We're thinking, gosh, I know I need to call these people, I need to write these letters, I need to sign up for this and that, I need to get to the creative work itself. And, you know, um, this is like you're trying to run the music studio and also be the artist at the same time. You know, when you're down there hooking up all the wires, but it's like, oh, I still got to go and, and try to perform, you know. Uh, so it's really, uh, it's kind of overwhelming for someone to do on their own, let alone, you know, um, even even in collaboration with other people, it's still a lot for for everyone to to get this done. Um, so I'm feeling the issue here, and maybe the next card is going to help us with that. Is trying to figure out what is the very next thing that you need to do for this, right? Do you need to kind of finish up the manuscript, right? Are there you know some other kind of systems that you have to put in place first? Um, do you have to go meet with certain people first? Like what's the next? What's the next thing for you to do to continue manifesting this thing? Because right now I feel like um, we're kind of spinning around. There's too much to do, and it's hard to it's hard to get any one thing done, right? Because we're scattered between so many different things. Let's see what the next card is. It's a seven of pentacles. Well, <clears throat> as it stands now with the with the eight of wands here spinning around in this circle it's just as it's as if we have all of this creative light right we have all of this potential all of this thing but it's it's just kind of it's being diffused it's just being the lights being scattered we need to harness the light we need to focus the light right so that we can um that we can succeed in manifesting this dream of yours Whatever this, whatever this thing is that you're doing, right? We've got these two aces here. This is something, is something big. It's something essential to your being. But the way it is right now, it's um, the light's being scattered, okay? And when the light is scattered, it makes the future seem a little dim, a little dark. It doesn't seem like things are really growing. But the the seven of uh, Pentacles here has a little bit of a secret to it because, yeah, it doesn't look like things are really very fruitful, right? It doesn't look like these things are ripe. Um, even when things seem dormant or seem like they are not moving forward, 
there is still progress being made. It's just, it's behind the scenes or it's relatively slow that we can't really perceive it. But there is confidence here. And all of the sevens talk about confidence. Okay? And this is the confidence that this project of yours, this plan, this path, this creation, will come to fruition. It will. Right? Period, stop, end of sentence. Uh, but um, <clears throat> it will do so a little bit quicker if we're able to harness some of this nervous energy that we have, some of this electricity. There's my cat to really confirm this, too. You don't have to believe me. You can believe him. We're going to switch to the path of the serpent now. And as I do this, I'd like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Totally free. Doesn't cost you anything. Leave some comments for me. I love hearing from you. Uh, give a shout out where in the world you're watching from. And, uh, well, let's get into it. What's the next card here? Four of Cups. <coughs> you have to excuse my voice today. I'm still battling my bronchitis and um, some laryngitis as well. A four of Cups here. Um, if this is kind of, you know, this is... <laughs> This is the feeling that we're just kind of, um, we're not moving, right? And this, to me, we, it's, we've got this, uh, the Eight of Wands. This is, to me, feels frantic. This feels like we're spinning around. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then, and now we get over here. Now we feel frozen. So it's, it, we're still not moving. But now the anxiety has passed. But now it's just like this kind of stupor, you know? It's just um, that we've we've exhausted ourselves, and now it's like I don't I can't even like hold my face up, you know. Um, <clears throat> so there's like, in some ways this is a relief, but in other ways we're we haven't we're not accomplishing anything, right? Um, so the four, the four wants to make sure you don't linger in this period too long. And I wonder if for you it is this this fluctuation of intense, intense, you know, whirlwind, fury, frantic activity, and then there's just kind of this stupor afterwards, you know. Um, it's kind of like a post-ictal period, you know. Um, so this is... It, it feels like a fluctuation. It feels like we kind of go in these modes and we're not progressing. And that maybe is why we're getting the Seven of Pentacles. I really wasn't expecting a Four of Cups here. But the Seven of Pentacles makes sense that if we are kind of either this fury of activity and then just kind of languishing, um, nothing is really getting done. So maybe with this uh, adjustment card, maybe this is really saying, hey, we need to contract with other people. We need to give these tasks to other people. You can't do everything. Obviously, we can't do everything ourselves because then we end up doing nothing and then we have to recover from all of this intense activity and we're not really accomplishing the goal that we set out to accomplish. So I think that this card really is about the kind of, you know, contracts. This is knowing what things to delegate. This is knowing that, yes, while you may have the skill set to do everything, you can't be expected to do everything, right? Just because you know how to do it doesn't mean that you need to do it. You can delegate some of these things to other people. And this might, just, this might be at work, this might be at school, this might be with your creative projects, your band. It could be with your, the novel you're writing or the business that you're running, whatever it is. I think this is the real key, and, and so far this is the only major arcana card that we have. So we need connections. Yeah. No one is an island. We need to rely on other people to help us with these things. And now, yes, look, that's what we've got now. Hierophant energy in the position of the environment, help from others. This is the understanding, the kind of the, the, uh, the weighing in our minds, the decision Okay, what things am I keeping? What things am I delegating? And then we ask for help. Right, this is this is the card. This is who we go to for help. Um, 
So having the Hierophant in the position of the environment is us asking for help. But this is us being smart about it. We know who to ask and for what tasks, you know. So the real wisdom comes from knowing who to delegate these things to. You can't just flip a coin or, or flip through the yellow pages and pick someone. You have to kind of know who the right person for the job is. You have to know who to ask for help. Yeah. This is a, this, I'm glad we got that card. That's a nice one. And now we've got the moon card, difficulty. Uh, this is the position of what we don't want. And that's uncertainty. This is us saying, okay, well, if I delegate this work to certain other people or other businesses or contractors or whatever, I can't be certain it's going to be done to my standards. And that's this moon card. The moon card is uncertainty. We're not going to know. But we know that the way things have been functioning now, we're not really seeing the progress. But if we delegate things to other people, we still, we don't know that things are going to be done to our standards. Yeah. So we have to have a little bit of, a little bit of trust. We have to face this fear a little bit. Yeah. Because something does need to change here. If we're going to, if the next card is going to be a very successful card, something has to be done differently because the way it's been going hasn't been quite working. Okay. Let's see what the next card is. Oh, well. Well, now I've, my hope has transferred over to the mystery card. The hanged man here is the final card. And this, you know, now we have a lot of major arcana. <coughs> Excuse me. So the hanged man could be saying, yeah, you've got to delegate things to, to other people, contractors, whatever. You're not going to know what kind of work is going to be done. You, you, do, you have no guarantees, right? You cannot be 100% certain that everything is going to be done to your standards, but you have to be okay with that. Right. This is you just kind of hands off, you know, I've delegated it to you. Um, do you trust yourself that you made the right decision? Then trust them to do the work. Trust them to do their part. Hands off. Right. This is, this is completely resigned. Okay, I'm trusting you guys. I paid. Now, you know, don't let me down. Um, and so we're not going to meddle, right? And this is going to allow you to do this watery work that you do and, um, you know, come up with that, that raw material that is what this business is. If this is a book or a creative project or if it is a business or whatever, um, you've got to get back to doing what you do. And that is creating. Yeah. So I like this. But let's look at the mystery card now and see if that's going to give us the kind of final the final say here. All right. I obviously want uh, a nine or a 10 of pentacles or cups. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments, okay? Uh, two of swords, two of swords. Well, this isn't, this isn't that. Um, I feel like this is uh, this is coming down. I think you know that you have to share some of this workload, right? But I think the question really is how do you how do you decide? Like, what what's the criteria for selecting who to delegate things to? Because again, it can't just be random. You're not just handing out jobs, you know. But how do you have that kind of certainty that's not going to either bite you in the ass later? Or that you're not going to be like up late at night worried about biting your nails, thinking, "Ah, did I did I give the right person the right job?" You know. So we need this kind of peace. We need to be able to make our decision and contract out for certain parts of things, whatever this is exactly. And then we need to be able to sleep at night. Okay. So you need to have this real certainty that 
you trust yourself to make the right decision. And once that decision's made, hands off, not worried about it, I'm not going to lose any sleep at night. So that's the ideal. That's what we're striving for here. Okay. Now we're going to do an extended reading as well. If you want to stick around, click on the link either above or below in the video description. Um, <clears throat> Leo readings every Tuesday and Saturday, but I'm here every day. You can come back and see me again tomorrow. Okay. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Leave a comment for me. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.